Amen. Praise God. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. Hello. Hallelujah. Uh, that's so good that God has given me this opportunity to share His Word in this day, this International Women's Day. And uh, not only for this, because, uh, because of the Word of God, and I believe that what God has placed in my heart will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. And uh, I would like to pray again, once again, you have prayed for me, but I want to pray for each one of us to, uh, to really receive the Word of God. And uh, before coming to this place, God, God, God was speaking to my heart that He wants to heal people here. He wants to heal people physically. And uh, if you have any disease in your body, any illness, uh, let us stand up, all of us in this place. I want to pray for your life. I want to pray for your health. Can you stand up, please? All of us, let us pray in this moment. If you have any disease in your body, any illness, place your hand in your body. If you have a uh, problem in your stomach, you can place your hand in the, in the place that you are suffering. Uh, or if you have any problem, kidney problems, you can put your hand there. And I believe that, that God will release His power here to heal us, to, uh, to set us free from any disease. Amen, guys? Amen, Amen brothers and sisters. Amen. Hey, raise your hands, please, to the Lord and begin to speak to Him. Begin to, to present your life before Him, your health before the Lord, your body, your soul, your emotion. Uh, begin to pray in this moment. Uh, don't, don't wait for my time. Don't, don't wait for me to pray for you. Just pray. Just pray in this moment. God wants to listen to you. God wants to listen to your voice. Uh, God wants to, to listen to your heart in this moment. And uh, He will release power. Power to heal your body, to heal your soul, to relieve your life from any kind of burdens. In the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you so much for being in this place with my brothers and sisters. I receive all the praise that we that that my brothers have prayed for me in this moment. But I I want to pray for them, Father. And I believe, as you have said to me, that you want to heal us in our bodies physically. In this moment, Lord, I, I ask you, Father, release healing. Release yeah. healing in this yeah. place, physical healing. In the name of Jesus, we will be with the spirit of disease among us in Jesus' name. Oh, I pray for every, every woman who, who is suffering of endometriosis. I rebuke this disease in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed in this place. If you have a problem, gastrit, gastrit, like this, something like this, be healed in your stomach in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, give us also, give us understanding to understand your word. Give us discernment. In Jesus' name, Father, help us to concentrate in your word. Help us to focus on you because your presence makes all the difference in the ministry of your people, Father. Come with your presence more powerfully, Lord. Powerfully come, come and have your way, Lord. Please, Father, don't, don't let us leave this place without something new from you. In the name of Jesus, my Father, in the name of Jesus, give us a spiritual refreshment. Renew our lives, my, my Father. Renew our soul, our mind by your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, come, come with your presence. We don't be here just to, to see our brothers and sisters, just to hang out. We, we are here to listen to you and to look to you, Lord. Because when we look to you, you bring, you, you illuminate our hearts, our life, Lord. Oh, so removed from us. Any kind of spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus. And give us eyes to see you and ears to listen to you, Lord. To yeah. listen to you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, say, give a place. Give a place to the Lord in this moment. Get ready. Get ready for His word. Give this. Receive healing in your body. Receive healing in your womb. Receive healing, woman. Oh, raise your hand. Receive healing in your body, yes. in your stomach. Yes. 
Your kidney receiving healing. Yo quiero aprender a ser. Oh, Holy Spirit, by your anointing, by your power. Your word says that how Jesus was anointed by Father, by the Father. And uh, he was also anointed by the Holy Spirit, God, God Father God was with Jesus and the Holy Spirit has anointed Jesus who walked around and healed people and set people free. Lord, we cry out upon your name and we ask you, Father, we release healing, power, deliverance in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open this, the, the eyes of your hearts. Open the eyes of your hearts, Father. We are not here to waste this time. We are here to learn more from you. Change, change the atmosphere. Oh, have your way, my Lord. Have your way, my Lord. Have your way, Father. My sister, my brother, receive healing, healing in your body. Receive that by faith, by faith. Receive that by faith. I prophesy that after you leave this place, you have no disease in your body. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? I declare that you 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 are you will not leave this place without directions from the Lord. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me that there are people here who need to make serious decisions in this week. God will give you directions. God will counsel you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can you thank him? Can you thank him? Just say it. Thank you, Lord, for the healing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the directions in my life. Thank you for your presence. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Is anyone here in this place that we are praying here and uh, you are feeling well in this moment? Can you raise your right hand? If you are feeling you're not feeling good and now you're feeling the help that God has brought to you. Is anyone here? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Guys, I want to talk to you today about the presence. Can you say with me? The presence. The presence. Of course, it talks about the presence of God, the presence of Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Open your Bibles with me in Exodus chapter 33, verse 12, please. Today I wanted to speak about other subjects, but God made the, this word burn in my heart and He said to me, I, I want to remember my children about the essence of life. Essence of life is the presence of the Lord. Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. Let us read what he's saying. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you. <laughs> and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? 
what else will distinguish me and your people from all the, the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you, you have asked me, because I am pleased with you and you, I know you by name. Guys, I really love this text. <laughs> Because uh, we know that Moses w w uh, was not living in the new covenant, but uh, he was very intimate with the presence of the Lord, how he loved the presence of the Lord. And in this moment, we know that God said to, to Moses that he would destroy the, the Israelites because they were very rebels. And uh, Moses interceded for the people. Moses prayed for the people of Israel, and then God had mercy on them and did not destroy them, right? So in this moment here, before entering the promised land, we know that Moses did not enter. We know that, but uh, we know that the, the greatest passion in Moses' life was not the promised land, was the presence of the Lord. And then Moses also said, God, you are telling me that you, you are pleased you, uh, about me, with me, so I don't want to enter the promised land, I don't want your people to enter the promised land without your presence. What, what else will distinguish your people, will distinguish me uh, in, on this earth uh, compared to all other nations? What else? Ask with me, what else, God? What else? <laughs> what else will distinguish me, will distinguish your people? if your, your presence will not go with us. And uh, because of the, this text, I was meditating on that. And uh, the, the Lord is, uh, wants to say to us that we need to, uh, how can I say this? We need to understand that the presence of the Lord is the greatest blessing that we can have. Actually, we have the presence of the Lord. And when we see the life of Jesus, Jesus as a human being, Jesus did, did not do anything in his, in his life, in his calling, without the presence of the Holy Spirit, without the presence of the Father. He did not the work alone. He was always in partnership with the presence of the Lord. And uh, we know that when we read the Bible, the Gospels, Jesus never neglected the presence of God. Jesus was a man of prayer, or he had a prayerful life. Jesus always prayed it to the Father, and uh, he needed the help of the Father, the Holy Spirit, to fulfill his, his destiny on earth, to fulfill his, uh, his purpose as a human being. So he never neglected the presence. The presence of the Lord is what, what uh, that distinguishes us on this earth, guys. And uh, what does God want to talk to us tonight about his presence? When we see this text that we have read here, uh, Moses was the leader of the people of Israel. Uh, God used, that, used him powerfully. And uh, sometimes we ask it to ourselves, what is his secret? What, is, what was the secret of his life? And uh, we know that the secret of the life of Moses, David, and the Apostle Paul, for example, was the very presence of the Lord, the presence of God. The presence of God is the only thing that makes all the difference in our lives. But sometimes we, we are neglecting His presence. Some of the children of God live uh, throughout the week and they forget the presence of the Lord. Some of them only remember God when they go to church. Every, once a week, every Sunday or other day of the week. Men of the children of God always remember God when we, they are facing a, some trial or when they are in the wilderness or when they go to church, they only remember God in these situations. But God wants us to remember Him in every moment of our life, to say like Moses said, God, please do not let me live my life without your presence. Do not let me enter the promised land. Do not let me uh, experience your promises in my life without your presence. See, I want your presence with me because without the presence of the Lord, we are nothing. We are nothing, guys. Only the presence of the Lord can do much in our lives, can do much for you. Maybe you are here today and uh, 
you, you sometimes you, you get upset, you get frustrated because you are trying to do life by yourself. You cannot live by yourself. You need Jesus, you need the presence of the Lord. And uh, when we see the, the life of Jesus or Moses, uh, we see that Jesus as a human being, he's God, of course, but he came, he came in, a, in a body, in a flesh body, you know? And uh, one thing that we have to understand is that the presence of the Lord is for every moment, every minute of our life. We need Him, we need to, uh, to be before Him to receive directions, instructions from the Lord, not only in the wilderness. And Moses understood that, that the people of Israel uh, was not need, needing the presence of the Lord just uh, in the wilderness or to be set free from the, uh, the slavery, but they needed the presence of the Lord even to enter the promised land. Why? Because they needed the power of the Lord to kill the giants that they, they will face them. God has promises for you. God has promised land for your life, for your family, for your business. But you cannot enter the promised land without the presence of the Lord. We know, of course, that the Lord is, uh, is with us at all the time. We know that. But sometimes we don't have the presence of the Lord in our thoughts, in our feelings, in our hearts. We forget God easily. We, we leave the church and uh, we begin the week, Monday, working, doing the things, and then we forget the presence of the Lord. Guys, God, is, God wants you to always remember that you need Him. You need His presence. You are nothing without Him. Like Jesus did. Jesus worked in partnership with the presence of the Lord. We know that our God is one God in three persons, compounded in three persons. We know that. The Holy Spirit, the Father God, and Jesus. Three persons with the same essence. And they used, they used to interact with themselves, to, to work together. And uh, if the Trinity, if the Godhead worked together, works together, in unity, how can, how, how can, can we try to live by ourselves, by our own, without the wisdom of the Lord, without a prayer for life? What is prayer, Michael? What is prayer? <laughs> what is prayer? Prayer is the expression, one of the expression of our relationship with the Father talking to the Lord, our conversation, communion, fellowship with the Father. We need to have a prayerful life. But Jesus, please, go to the next uh, slide. Jesus said in John uh, chapter 15, He said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. And He says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit for itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The Lord is saying to us today, abide in me, abide in my presence. The vine also represents the presence of Jesus. What is abiding in Jesus or remaining in Jesus? We know that we are in Christ, but we have to be intentional to be with Him, to call upon His name at all the time, guys. At all the time, you, know, you don't know it all. Remember that you don't know it all. You need the wisdom, the understanding that God has to impart to you. It talks about impartation. God wants to impart to you His wisdom, His uh, vitality, vitality, uh, life. He wants to impart to you His life. But how can we remain in abiding Christ? By prayer, of course, we are, uh, during these last weeks, we are learning that we have to cultivate our intimacy with the Lord in the secret place, right? Yeah. The last preachings, the last sermons, we are learning that we have to, to pray more and also to intercede. Intercession is another kind of prayer. 
But the essence of prayer is the relationship with the Lord. Talking to me, we are learning that. That we have to have quality time to, to enter in our bedroom, to enter in a secret place and to talk to the Lord, to have a meeting with Him, to, uh, to, to mark or to arrange the encounter with the presence of God. There is no intimacy without conversation. There is no intimacy without listening to the Lord, the one that is God, that is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Are you here? Yes. So we have to cultivate, to work, to, to have equality time. Uh, one thing that, that is happening with me these last weeks in my life is that uh, I, I, I put myself before the Lord and I asked Him, God, please help me to have a meeting with you every day, to separate a time, to pray to you, to, to talk to you, to listen to your voice, to meditate on your word, on your principles, teach me your ways. And as Moses asked God here, oh God, teach me your way, teach me your intentions, teach me about your heart. And uh, guys, God answers our prayers. <laughs> he answers especially when the, this prayer uh, is according to these purposes. And uh, one thing that is happening is that it's uh, at the same time, it's very funny because when I wake up, I, I think, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to work, I have, I have some appointments today, but I, I feel that I'm not able to begin my day until I have a meeting with the Lord first of all. And I'm like, wow, praise God, God, the Holy Spirit is helping me. So what I mean, God is calling you to a meeting, to a daily meeting with Him. To, a, to, be a, to have a prayerful life in your life. Because you, you need that to abide in Christ, to abide in Him. Because we know that Christian life is not about coming to church every, every Sunday, every week. We know that this is a part of a Christian life. But Christian life talks about relating to God every day, in every moment. Why? Because you have 24 7 access to the presence of the Lord. I will repeat that. <laughs> Guys, sometimes God needs to remember us, remind us about realities, simple realities that we used to forget them. And God is reminding you, remind us, reminding us today that you have 24 7 access to His presence, to His throne in your life. Amen? No, you are not here. No. <laughs> In every moment, as you want, as you desire, you can come before the Lord and talk to the Lord. We are learning that. You are learning that too. Next. You need to have a prayerful life. Prayer. Friendship with the Lord. Friendship. A prayerful life is a strong life. You know that? You know? If you have a prayerful life, you have a strong life. Why? Because you receive the, the strength, the force of the Lord, the force of the Holy Spirit. And the prayer of life makes us abide in Christ. So keep in touch with heavens. Keep in touch with the presence of the Lord at all the time, guys. God is calling you to go deeper in His presence. It is not enough to be in a ministry, to serve people, to serve the Lord in His kingdom. It is not enough to, to come to church, to, to treat people well. It's not enough, guys. We need to go deeper in His presence because there is more. There is more to know in the presence of the Lord. There is more. And in the presence of the Lord, you find yourself, according to, uh, from the, the, the point of view of the Lord, you find yourself, you find directions, you find maturity, you find wisdom with the presence of the Lord. Our life depends on this life of intimacy with God. We are learning this. We, we, we are also learning that. Always before the service, we are here praying, interceding for you, for the church, and for the worship team. And we are asking God, God, help us to worship you, to, to give you the praise that you deserve today. Because you are not here just to practice English. <laughs> yes. Just to improve English. 
If you come to this place just to, to train to practice your English, yes, come on. sorry, but it is not the priority of this ministry, sorry. The priority of this ministry is to exalt the Lord. Amen. Is to give the best praise, the best worship to the Lord. Yes. Guys, Come on. the time belongs to the Lord and uh, He made you a favor to put you in the line, in the timeline, so that you can worship Him with your life, with your mouth, with your heart. Are you here? You got it? Because I believe in something, one of the things that I believe that the, the Word of God says that the anointing of the Holy Spirit teaches us everything. And that you have to prioritize, prioritize just one thing, the presence of the Lord. Because with the presence of God, everything comes. Everything that you need comes. Everything with the presence. You, you have to, oh, oh God, help me here. <laughs> You have to, to grab the presence of the Lord to embrace and say to him, God, don't let me live this life without you, without your presence. Make the presence of the Lord your passion, your love. But also, God is teaching you today, tonight, not only to cultivate your intimacy with him, your secret place with the presence, with the Holy Spirit, let me remind you about something. The Holy Spirit dwells in you, okay? <laughs> he is with you 24-7. Okay? He is with you. And He is waiting to have fellowship, to, to listen to you, to, to share, guys. It, it's very simple. Sometimes we imagine that God, it's like He is so distant, but God is so close to you. He's very close. He, he just wants to talk to you, to, to, to do the things together. I remember when I was uh, younger, when I was at school, when the teacher asked us to, to make it, uh, or to do any, any work or exercise together with any colleague or partner to, to do something in pairs. I love that because we could have any more success in what we are doing. God wants to do the things, wants you to do the things in pair with Him, in partnership. No, I, I have to illustrate here. Fabi, come here, please. We are almost the same. <laughs> It'll be great. I love this. God wants you to understand that you, you need Him at all the time to do the things in pair, in couple, in partnership in friendship, everything, and, and, and everywhere you go, God, I, I need you to do this, I need you to work, I need you to take care of my family, to educate my, my children, I need you, God. God, God wants this with you guys. Amen. Oh, yeah, oh, God. Thank you, Father. Yes. <laughs> you understand this, that it's about partnership, fellowship, friendship, I really love doing the things with the Holy Spirit. I really love because when you try to do to do the things by yourself in your own strength, you always be exhausted. You always be tired. But I have been discovering when I correspond to the presence of God, my day becomes so light and at the same time so fruitful because there is a difference between to be busy and uh, fruitful. Be fruitful. God has called you to be fruitful, not to be occupied and not to be busy, but, but to be fruitful. When you live, when you do life with Jesus, you become so fruitful. Yes. Very fruitful. Even you face trials and troubles and, and problems, the life will be life with the presence of Jesus. Because we will be abiding in Him, abide in Jesus, remain in Jesus, in His presence. Because apart from Him, you can do nothing. Nothing. Guys, I, <laughs> I, I wronged you. I made mistakes every moment, every time that I tried to do things by my own strength. 
And I learned that I have been learning that I need the presence of the Lord to do anything, to do anything. And the God is teaching us to cultivate His presence. But today, He wants you, He wants to emphasize that you also need to be more aware of His presence in your life. Because when you when you leave the, the secret place, how many of you had had a time with the Lord this this week? How many of you had had a time with the Lord in the secret place, in your bedroom, praying in the having a time of, of intimacy with Him? Amen. But you need to leave that place, right? Because you have a family to take care of, you have business, you have a job to go work, and you have. A lot of things to do. But the priority of our lives is the presence of the Lord. To have a meeting with Him, to, to receive uh, guidance, directions, and uh, what He wants us to live in that day. Because we don't know what we are going to face this next week. We're, we don't know. And we need to listen to the Lord. God wants to prepare us for trials also. Because He anoints us for difficult things. <laughs> because the anointing of the Lord does not make sense when it is for easy things in our lives, but for challenges. Mm -hmm. Are you here? And uh, you, you have to leave that place. You will not be there throughout the day, unless you are in your day off, of course, but <laughs> during the week, you need to, to leave that place. And God is a God of responsibility. Okay? But what are you going to do after leaving that place? After leaving the secret place, you have to be connected with the presence. Because God wants to work with you. <laughs> God wants to give you wisdom to take care of your family, of your children. You need Him. You cannot... Uh, Oh God, give me the word. You, you cannot lose your focus. You have to focus on the presence. And all the time to have God in your mind. To be more aware of His constant presence. His presence is constant in your life. And Jesus is inviting you to abide in Him. He's saying to you, Hey, hey, my, my, two, my children, hey, my daughter, my son. Let's do life together. Let's work together. Let's do ministry together. I don't want to live the things by yourself. You cannot do anything apart from me. Let's work together in every moment, in your everyday life. You can invite Jesus. You can correspond to the presence of the Lord and call him, Oh God, I need your help to work my job. I need your help to, to finish that project. I need your help to serve people. Oh God, I need your help to go to the gym. <laughs> Invite him. Oh God, I need your help to clean the house. Oh, he will help you. Uh, last Friday, I was preparing myself to go to a church to, to serve in a women's service. And... Uh, <laughs> I planned that in that day, uh, the service would be at night, and in that day, I wanted to clean the house for my mom. And I thought to myself, God, I, I think that I, I don't have enough time to clean the house. And uh, God said to me, go to the place of the encounter. Encounter me, let us have a meeting. And uh, it was amazing, praise God. And then, in two hours, <laughs> I finished to clean the house and my mom asked me, how did you do that? And I said, the Spirit helped me to clean all the house of my car. I, I don't know how, guys, but the Holy Spirit has an anointing to accelerate what you need your, in your life. He's powerful to do that. Amen? No, you are not understanding. God wants to help in every moment. To, he, he, he wants you to, to have him, to have his presence in your mind, in your thoughts. Do not forget God. After leaving this place, do not forget his presence. Always call, uh, call upon his name. Always call him, God, I need you. God, please, don't let me to lose that boss. Sometimes he answers my prayer like this. In this, he 
you know, are you understanding, guys, that in the simple things in our daily life, God wants to participate with us, actually. He wants us to participate of what He's doing in that day. And sometimes that everything that God does, it all is about, uh, how can I say this, praying tongues, dancing, jump. No, no. God is in every details of your life. In every detail. Oh, that's not important to God. Really? Isn't that important to the Lord? Everything that concerns your life is important to the Lord because every detail counts. Every detail. And Jesus is inviting you to be, to depend on, on his presence, to abide in him. Some people want, want the blessing of the Lord, want his miracles, his power, his anointing, but they neglect the presence. Do not neglect the presence of God. Always you can think about him. I believe that God wants to, to bring you close to him in every moment as you are in your computer, working. Guys, God is responsible, okay? What I, I, I'm saying that because some people, when, I, when we, we preach something like that, people think, oh, uh, that means that when I'm working my job with my colleagues, I will begin to pray in tongues, I will begin to... Uh, no, no, God is responsible, okay guys? But what God wants in this moment that, <laughs> that we cannot, we have to control ourselves. <laughs> he wants to make this fire burning in you, in your heart. He wants to whisper in your heart. As you are working, he's telling you something. He's giving you direction. He's giving you ideas. This is the presence of God. Maybe you are seeking after God's provision, after God's wisdom, strategies, resources, miracles, power, anointing. But maybe what is missing, missing your life is to focus on the presence. Not on your problems, not on yourself. Not in your gifts, not in your job, not in your ministry, but on the presence of the Lord. Presence. And to fill your mind, to be more conscious about His presence in your life. He is with you, so stop ignoring the presence of God in your everyday life. Stop. That's so terrible when, when you, you, walk, you are walking with someone and the, this person is ignoring you. God also dislikes them. Stop ignoring the presence of the Lord. You cannot live by yourself. Your abilities cannot do much for you, but the presence of God can do much, can do all things in your life according to His purposes. The presence of the Lord can do all things, so we have to be more intentional about the presence of God in, in the relationship because there is no relationship without intentionality. There is no relationship without intentionality, guys. You have to be intentional with the presence, not to be passive. Oh, God, give me, give me, give me. And God is saying, give me attention, give me attention. Pay attention to me. Give me attention. I want to talk. Oh, God, please, the please. Do you are saying, hey, let me speak to you. Let us hang out. <laughs> let us hang out together. If you go to Pampulha to walk, invite the presence of God to speak to you as you walk. Wow. Hang out with God. That's real, guys. It's for real. I have hobbies in my life. I do things, and in every, uh, in every event of my life, I always call the Holy Spirit. And uh, it, that is making difference in my life. Because the presence of the Lord is what that distinguishes you. You are distinguished by the presence of God, not by your ego, not by yourself. Are you here? You have to, to value more. Let me say you something. Yesterday I was sharing this, what I'm going to say with my brother. 
And uh, we are thinking about relationship with God. And we used to say, oh, Christian life is about our relationship with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus who died on the cross for us and we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. Yes, Christian life is about relationship with God. You can say that you are, you, you may say that you are a children of God because you are. As you, since you're born again, you are the children of God. You are, right? How many children are here in this place? <laughs> you are the child of God, right? But you cannot say that you have a true relationship with God unless you walk with Him daily. Unless you talk to Him, unless you meditate in His precepts because there is no relationship uh, um, relationship is not made by oneself relationship is built and is made by more than one person there is no relationship with yourself okay so if you are trying to uh, uh, to, to claim if you are saying that oh I have a relationship with God and you know you do not correspond to his presence there is no relationship there you are his children if you are his child but you are not afraid God has many children but few of them have a true relationship with the presence of God so I want you to make a decision a serious decision from today to walk with God daily, to be intentional. God is with you, always. He said that, I will be with you until the end of the time. I will be with you. He is with you, but maybe throughout the week, during the days, you forget God. You forget His presence in your mind, in your feelings. David's prayer, I, I, I don't remember the psalm or it is, but he said, God, may the thoughts of my mind and the words of my lips be, be pleasing to you, be pleasant to you. He said that we need to fill our minds with the, the truth of God. God. The Lord is proposing you to have a deep and a true re relationship with His presence from today on. Guys, make a decision today. Christian life is also about decision. It is not about feeling something. I, 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 I don't feel in there. I don't feel. No, no. It's about decision. As you make the decision for Christ, and you, you, please, don't turn back your decision, okay? But in every day, you have a decision to, to, to make. So make a serious decision to have God, to have Him in your mind, in your thoughts, in your daily life. He wants you to make a point of having His manifested presence in every moment of your everyday life. Amen? Um, manifestation of the Lord. And again, people always, when we say manifestation of the presence of the Lord, People only think, or Christians only think, oh, manifestation, it's the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power, ta, right? People always think like that. But God has a lot of kind, or several kind of manifestation. Like, as you work, as you study, as you preach, as you, you are having fun with your friends, as you enjoy your life, he, wa he wants to manifest to you like a whisper. He wants to touch your heart, to heal you. And sometimes it happens in the secret of your heart. But you have to have him in your mind. Don't try to live your life by yourself. You will make a lot of mistakes more than you make. <laughs> Ask God, God, I want your presence. Please, if your presence will not go with me, don't let me to make that in that decision because you know that God is always glorified in His will, not in ours. Oh, it is for the glory of God, the syndrome of Saul. <laughs> no, I will glory with the, the cause because it's the, the, for the glory of God. No, guys, what, uh, what glorifies 
the name of the Lord is His will, His desires. Some are here, and uh, you have received uh, proposals. Ask God, God, if you are not in this or in that in my life, please do not let me to make that decision. Without you, I don't want to go there. Without you, I don't want to change this in my life. And then, when we offer to the Lord, everything goes rightly. Because everything that, that God does is correct, is right. Are you here, guys? The Bible says that unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watching in vain. It talks about dependence on God. Only the presence of the Lord can help you be dependent of His presence, on His presence. Amen? Oh no, I have much experiences in my life. I know how to, to deal with this. I, I know how to handle this. No, 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 please. Experiences are good. Teach, teach us a lot of teachings. We learn from them. But do not, uh, how can I say, do, do not lean on them. Trust in the Lord. It will be better for you. Always call upon his name. The next. Uh, the next, please. Be dependent on the presence of the Lord as Jesus did. Jesus said, Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Jesus lived in a constant relationship with the Father. So, I want to give you a piece of advice. I want to consider you to do something from today. When you wake up in the morning, ask God, God, what are you doing today? I want to do with you. What you are doing in my workplace, in my family, I want to be with you as Jesus did. Because we pray, just to conclude here, we pray, oh God, use me, use my life to do this, to do that. Oh God, I want to do something for you. I want to do something for our glory. Guys, we need to know what is the will of God for us to do for him to glorify his name. Because there is a big difference between doing something for the Lord and doing something with him. Maybe you are trying to do something for the Lord, but you are not with Him. You are trying by, by your own understanding, uh, by your own strength. Choose to do the work of the Lord, what He wants you to do with Him, as Jesus did. With the Lord, not only for Him. Oh, I will do this for God. No, no, do with Him. Because He knows how to do it. Some, some people sometimes uh, ask me, Anna, what do you do in the kingdom of God? And I used to say, I am taking part of the work of God with him. Because I've been learning that. Because there is power, there is grace and anointing when we are working with him. He always does his own work. Amen, guys? It is the presence of God that makes all the difference in our lives. I don't want to be here to be in other place without the presence of God. We need to love Him, to, to enjoy His presence. Sometimes we'll be laughing in His presence. Sometimes I, I'm in my day off my house and I'm thinking things and sometimes I do a, a funny thing and I, I begin to talk to Father and I begin to laugh because God is not angry with us. He's a joyful God. Amen, guys? Sometimes we laugh, sometimes in our, in our ordinary days we can enjoy the peace, the presence of God. The next Psalm uh, 71 verse 7 says 
The psalmist says, I am as a wonder and surprise to many, but you are my strong refuge. What is this psalmist saying this? He is saying, in other words, he is saying, the secret of my success is your presence, Lord. Mm -hmm. I love this verse. Yeah. Because people can, can look to you, oh, how Marlon, how Rachel, Raquel, how, how they are very successful. They have a successful life. But they know what is the secret of their lives. What is the secret of Andrew's life, of Andrew's life, and of you? <laughs> the presence of the Lord. Guys, I, I, I have understood that Olga. Sometimes we feel very unable, unable, yes, unable, incap incapable <laughs> to do some things in this life. But when you go to the presence, when you recognize the presence of God in your life, God gives you strength, grace to do what you are thinking that you are not able. In the Lord, in His presence, we are able to do what He wants us to do in this life, in His presence, because when we host His presence, when we honor the presence of God, recognize His presence, wisdom comes, the strategy comes, and the uh, uh, intelligence comes. Amazing. Ideas come, guys. Miracles happen in the presence of the Lord when you host, when you honor His presence. God makes miracles. Yes. God imparts to you His wisdom and He gives you answers. God always has something to impart to you, to give us. God, God will not let you to live in His presence this moment of intimacy without anything. He wants to give you something. He has something to give to you tonight. Maybe you are here, you are needing wisdom, strength, intelligence, strength, joy, peace. You are in the right place. Because you are looking to God. But I hope that you, when you leave this place, you keep looking to Him. The Bible says that those who look to God were illuminated. <laughs> Or illuminated by His presence. We can experience tranquility in the presence of God and overflow in peace. Sometimes I, I, I feel so uh, a such peace in my heart, my life, actually every single day since I gave my life to Jesus, a peace that never ends because of the presence of God. And to conclude here, his presence makes us secure. If you are afraid, God wants to make you secure. God wants to make you a fearless person. His presence is perfect. And in the verse 14, Moses, actually God said to Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. This word rest represents Security represents quietness. This is the presence of God in the presence. We have all we need. We, we, uh, everything that we need is found in the presence of God. Don't try to look what you are needing outside the presence of God. Go to Him. One thing that we
let us inform them. People, people need, need to see need to see God, the presence of God in your life. You are not working your job eh, there in your workplace. You are not studying or teaching people, I don't know where, in vain. They need to see the presence of God in your life. Because the Bible says that Christ in us is the hope of the glory, the glory of God, guys. So be, be, be conscious about His presence. Make your relationship with God strong. Strong. Strengthen your relationship with Him. Stop neglecting the presence of God in your everyday life. From today, make this decision. I would like to call the next piece, ladies. Like, I'd like to call the worship team as we read the, the, the last text in this moment. Open your Bible with me, Proverbs chapter 3. Are you here with me? Amen. Amen. Are you understanding what God, God is saying to you? Amen. God is teaching us today, stop neglecting me in your daily life. Be more aware of my presence. In every moment, guys, as you work, <laughs> as you clean the house, <laughs> as you preach, as you do something, as you talk to someone, don't lose God's presence of your sight. Look to Him. Always. As you are in the bus, as you are driving, <laughs> thinking about Him. And He will begin to teach you something new. I can say that there is no day, there is no day in my life that I, I do not receive a fresh teaching of the Lord. Because I needed it to, to understand that. I needed it to learn how to cultivate the presence of God, how to correspond to His presence. Because you, you will face trials throughout the day. And you need the presence, the directions, guys. It's about life. Don't do your life without Jesus, without abiding Him. Amen? It's amazing to live with Him in pair, in partnership. <laughs> The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Sometimes we are very proud. Oh, I know how to do it. No, God. Depend on His presence. In His presence, there is healing, there is strength, there is wisdom. What you are asking to the Lord that you, you have to receive, yeah, God wants to, to give to you. Because you, you haven't received yet, because you are looking in other place, you are uh, seeking this thing in other place. But the, the right place is here inside of you, the Holy Spirit wants to, to teach you. Can you stand up, please? And I want to ask you, what is the answer <laughs> that you are going to give to God today? Will you make a decision to be more aware of His presence in every moment, in a full moment? To be more, to be closer to Him. Close your eyes in this moment. And uh, before the worship team begins to sing, just talk to Him. His presence is for all of His children. He is with you. You have, you have His presence. His presence is the greatest blessing that you have. Close your eyes, guys. Remember, the priority of this ministry is to invite you closer, to, to be closer to Him, to His presence. Leave this shallow place. Leave 
really shall a place in your Christian life? Go deeper. Your life depends on this. Your life depends on the presence of God. Your life depends on this decision to make God the priority of your life, to be more aware, more conscious of His presence. Your life depends on that. So ask God, God, teach me how to have you in my mind, in my thoughts, in my emotions. God wants to touch your emotions. He wants to restore our emotions. He wants to restore, oh God, I, I, I can feel God is speaking here, speaking here specifically now with some people. God wants to, to heal your feelings. You are violated, you are violated in your feelings. And because of that, you feel that you are not able to feel the presence of God. God is breaking. Breaking this stronghold right now. You can have this. In the name of Jesus. And understand that your life will become more exciting when you do life with the presence. Begin to pray. Is you and God right now? If you want to, to bow down for Him. Thank you. 